This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama and thriller film called Another Girl. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On a website, many young women contact the mysterious Katie Campenfeld to express their admiration for her book and their concern about her well-being. In a quiet neighborhood, a college student named Elle has also finished reading Katie's book. She calls her brother, Patrick, and jokes about their mutual hate for their mother. Elle mentions the book, The Undis discovered girl, where a blogger named Katie goes missing. She notes that Katie narrated the whole story until her mother took over and claimed that everything Katie said wasn't true. In Katie's last blog entry, she got into her car and was never seen again. Upon hearing her brother's confusion, Elle asserts that she needs to know what happened to Katie. Patrick is concerned that Elle is talking about Katie as if she's real, but Elle thinks it could be based on a true story. However, Patrick points out that the author was a man. Realizing this, Elle apologizes, but Patrick understands that his sister is lonely. Despite her brother's concerns, Elle struggles to sleep at night, so she opens her laptop and searches for Katie. She finds a website with a contact button to message Katie Kempenfeld. Ignoring her doubts, Elle types a letter to Katie, admitting that she can't sleep as she imagines Katie dead somewhere. Elle adds that she's alone too much, so she overthinks everything. She ends the message, assuring the reader that she understands that Katie isn't real, but if there was a chance that she is, Elle is sure they'd be best friends. During their morning jog the next day, Elle shares that she sent the message last night. Her friend, Natasha, thinks the author is probably just relishing the admiration of his fangirls. Despite that, Elle continues sending messages, sharing personal thoughts to the unseen reader. One night, Elle wakes up to discover that Katie has replied and assured her that she's real. Curious, Elle asks what happened to her, to which Katie replies that she lied about the ending of her book to end her blog and cancel her reality show. Throughout her day, Elle chats with Katie. Katie reveals that she used a pseudonym for her book to keep her anonymity. Katie Campenfeld is also not her real name. Elle asks if she responds to every mail, and Katie claims she only replied to her because she seemed smart and needed a friend. Katie also notes that according to Elle's Facebook account, they live close by. Elle wonders why Katie keeps a contact option on her website if she doesn't always respond, so Katie admits that she loves being loved. That evening, Elle receives an email from the book's author, who tells her that he's not connected connected with a website where she contacts Katie because Katie doesn't exist. Elle shows a message to Natasha to ask for advice. Instead, Natasha threatens the fake Katie that they'll call the police if she contacts Elle again. While walking home, Elle reads Katie's explanation, telling her that she met the author and shared with him her blog archive. He offered to rewrite her blog entries as a novel, assuring her that he'll keep her identity a secret. Katie claims that this is why he lied to Elle. Elle, however, is unconvinced and becomes scared that the fake Katie is watching her. When she goes home, Katie continues trying to convince her that she's telling the truth. Elle refuses to believe her, convinced that weird men would do anything for no good reason. In the morning, Elle tries to ignore her mother's religious remarks during breakfast. Later, she reads a book in a cafe and notices that everyone else is with lovers or friends. As the loneliness sinks in, Elle decides to message Katie. She mentions that Natasha thinks Katie is dangerous. But Elle is convinced that there's no risk because she doesn't have money, and Katie can't hurt her worse than she does herself. Still, Katie said that she listens to her, so Elle wants to share her story. Over the next few days, Elle recalls how her mother forced her to try out for cheerleading, even though she hated it. After the tryouts, she overhears schoolmates making suggestive remarks about her. This caused Elle to plummet into depression, so she attempted to overdose that evening. Her mother found her but judged her for her actions. When Katie calls her a beautiful girl, Elle gets uncomfortable as she still thinks Katie is a guy tricking her. To convince her otherwise, Katie sends her a selfie. The next day, Elle shares that she hated college and wanted to attend art school. However, her mother made her go to a Christian sorority, which she found hellish. At a party, a guy named Tad tried to flirt with her, which Elle rejected. Still, Tad was persistent, and they ended up in bed together. Elle soon regretted this as Tad became controlling and aggressive throughout the relationship, yet would cry and apologize afterward to make Elle latch onto him. Eventually, Elle resorted to harming herself and told the doctor that Tad did it to her. Her. The doctor advised her to move on, but Elle didn't think she deserved better, even claiming that only death could free her. Concerned, the doctor advised her to ask for help from a friend or a parent, so Elle called Patrick, her mother, and some friends but ended up with no help. 
In the end, she stayed with her oldest estranged brother, Connor, whom she hadn't seen since their father died. Connor happily welcomed Elle and introduced her to his fiancée, Joseph. Only then did Elle find out about Connor's preferences. After sharing such personal things, Elle becomes hesitant about contacting Katie again. When Katie wonders if Elle hasn't been responding since she killed herself, Elle finally replies that it's a likely scenario. Admitting that sharing her life story made her feel better, Elle continued with her story. Her mother mother accused Connor of being a bad influence on Elle when she discovered that she moved in with him, unaware that he was also seeing a man. One day, Connor recommended Elle for a job in marketing. Elle tried to impress her interviewer, Molly, by noting how she left college to pursue a more on-hand experience. But Molly noticed her self-inflicted scar. She excused that it was a dog bite, and Connor's friend and the company's CEO, Dave, entered to ask about the dog. He then welcomed her into the company, confirming that she got the job. Dave showed her to her office, where Elle asked about the former employee she was replacing, hoping not to make the same mistakes as she did. Dave told her that his last assistant was passive, so he encouraged her to speak up about her ideas, even if it's above her pay grade. For weeks, Elle found herself getting comfortable with the company, even joining in campaign meetings, and soon made her own suggestions. One day, Elle met Dave's wife, Carmen. While Dave got ready to leave, Carmen offered her an extra job as a babysitter, which Elle happened accepted. Elle admits to Katie that she was insecure about her appearance after meeting Carmen. One day, Elle noticed that Dave was not feeling well, so he shared that he and Carmen attended a cocktail party where Carmen didn't behave. After Elle promised secrecy, Dave confessed that before marrying Carmen, she told him that she was ready to leave the party girl life behind to become a wife, a mother, and a businesswoman. That changed when their daughter was born. Now, Carmen was focused on shopping and partying, not caring about their kids and business. When Elle sympathized with him, Dave appreciated it. After that story, Elle stops replying to Katie again. The next day, Katie shares that telling her story in her book saved her life, so she encourages Elle to do the same. To convince her to share more, Katie confesses that she's married and has a baby named Sarah. This catches Elle's attention since Sarah is her middle name. Elle admits that she also wants to have someone to have a family with. Soon, Elle continues her story. While babysitting Dave and Carmen's daughter, Esme, Elle asks, asked about Carmen's interest in the business. Carmen just excused that she had been busy with Esme. However, Esme shared that she had preschool and a nanny. Still, Carmen insisted that there were things only a mother could do for her, like taking her to restaurants and shopping. On another day, Elle looked through images of models and joked that Dave should give Carmen the bikini a model was wearing. Elle wondered how Dave could afford Carmen's luxury clothes, but he admitted that she'd been using his trust money to shop, which stressed him out. Elle then asked why he married Carmen, so he confessed that the relationship was incredible before, but all that changed when Esme was born. At home, Connor announced that their mother called, offering to pay for any school Elle wanted. Seeing that it didn't make Elle happy, Connor realized that she didn't want to leave her job for a guy. When he asked who it was, she lied that Connor didn't know him. At Molly's birthday party, Dave and Elle started flirting. He then took her away from the crowd, and they started making out. However, Elle felt guilty and ran off. Elle recounts that she and Dave pretended like nothing happened after the party, but a week later, he kissed her again. This time, they were both sober, and Elle didn't leave. After a while, he pushed her away and apologized, refusing to continue because he was married. Elle laughed since it was him who kissed her, but she shrugged it off and walked away. Dave was hurt that she didn't look upset, so he kissed her again, this time more aggressively. This led to them sleeping together, but he left to meet with his wife right after the deed. Katie sees this as Dave taking advantage of Elle. To reciprocate her story, Katie shares that her husband, Kevin, sells medical equipment, and her daughter is three years old. However, Kevin is a jealous man, so Katie can only contact Elle through email, which she deletes afterward. She defends that she doesn't want Kevin to learn about her past and her blog. Elle continues her story, noting how Dave started ignoring her after their night together. While Elle was working overtime one night, Dave returned early from a trip. While drinking, Dave suddenly invited her to sit on his lap, which Elle does. He urged her to share something, so Elle showed him the scars on her thigh, which she made herself. She shared that she had been harming herself for a long time whenever she felt overwhelmed. Suddenly, Dave confessed his love for her, delighting Elle. 
Afterward, Dave snuck into Connor's house to make love with Elle. After their time together, Dave took photos of them. One night, Elle asked why he stayed with Carmen when their strained relationship might affect Esme. Dave admitted that if he divorced Carmen, she'd get half of everything he owned, including his company. He added that he'd rather be secure with his business since he wasn't sure if he'd be truly happy. The next morning, Elle received a message from Dave, asking when they would do it again. His choice of words made Elle suspicious, realizing that Carmen was behind the text. Despite knowing it was a trap, Elle replied affirmatively, realizing that this could be her way out. Soon, Dave called her, asking about the text and confirming that Carmen had taken his phone. He panicked, but Elle told him to forget about her since she was quitting. However, Elle wasn't off the hook since Connor found out. Instead of being angry, Connor thought Dave took advantage of her, but Elle noted that he was just lonely. Changing the topic, Connor offers her another job. After a while, Katie goes silent. When she finally responds, Katie shares that Kevin found out about her emails and blog. Thinking Elle might be a stalker, Kevin made her swear not to contact her again. However, Katie doesn't want a man to control her life, so she urges Elle to continue with her story. After leaving her old job, Elle worked at a warehouse. One day, Molly saw her and invited her to catch up. She shared that the team was glad that Dave was busted because he always slept with his assistants, and the team had been guilty about keeping it a secret from Carmen. This broke Elle's heart because she thought that Dave actually loved her. Molly tried to cheer her up since Elle was still young and free, while Dave was still stuck with Carmen, who was now more strict about his schedule and his assistance. Carmen hadn't divorced Dave because he lied that he only slept with Elle once out of pity. Dave shared everything with Molly because Molly was smarter than him, hence he wasn't attracted to her. This offended Elle, ranting how Dave won't divorce Carmen just because he was scared of her getting his money. Molly clarified that Dave signed a prenup, and Carmen's wealthy family was actually funding Dave's company, so if he divorced her, he wouldn't get anything. When Elle arrived home, she found Dave waiting for her. She berated him for tricking her, but Dave assured her that his relationship with Elle was different. He told her he really loved her and invited her for dinner, but Elle refused. The next day, Elle asked Connor and Joseph if they had a friend who could go on a date with her. Despite their friends not being straight, Elle went on a date with Trey. With Trey's help, she made Dave jealous as he continued stalking her. During their date, Trey gave her beauty tips, impressing Elle. Afterward, Trey walked her home, and Elle confessed that she'd be attracted to him if he was into women. As she was getting ready for bed, Dave sent her their pictures in bed together. Instead of making her reminisce about their time together, Elle forwarded the pictures to Carmen to prove that their relationship wasn't just for one night. She also texted Carmen that Dave sent her the photo since he can't move on from her. The next morning, Connor gravely announced that Dave was arrested for beating Carmen, who kicked him out after receiving Elle's texts. Carmen was sent to the ICU, and Esme witnessed everything. Because of this, Connor kicked Elle out of his house, blaming her for getting Carmen and Esme hurt. He accused her of not having any self-control, so he advised her to get help and figure herself out. Elle sobbed as she realized her mistakes. Feeling sorry for Elle, Katie invites her to meet up. Since Kevin is taking their daughter to his parents on the weekend, Katie has time to do so. The next day, Elle meets with Natasha, who advises her to stop looking into the past and work on her future. Elle complains that she always ends up with men who hate women, so Natasha suggests she focus on herself first instead of waiting for a man to save her. On Friday night, Elle drives to a diner to meet up with Katie, eager and nervous to see her pen pal for the first time. Katie adds that the diner is famous for their martinis, so she booked two rooms for them at a nearby motel in case they're too drunk to drive. Elle heads inside the diner and approaches a woman, mistaking her for Katie. Not finding Katie in the diner, Elle messages her and orders a martini while she waits. However, after hours of waiting and several martinis, Katie hasn't shown up nor responded to her, making Elle worry. Late at night, she goes to the motel and confirms that Katie reserved a room for her. She asks if Katie also reserved a room, which the motel attendant confirms as the room next to hers. However, he tells her that Katie hasn't arrived, so Elle goes to her room. After bolting the door and ensuring the room is secured, Elle settles down. She sends Katie a message, confirming that she has arrived at the motel. Elle spends the night watching movies and resting to sober up. When thunder booms, Elle wakes up and finds that Katie messaged her, announcing that she's in the motel. Elle freshens up before she hears a knock on the door. She checks the window first but finds it too bright, so she opens the door instead and gets knocked out. Over the next few days, more young women email Katie's account, hoping to connect with her as they believe 
believe she's real. One woman, Annie, shares that she had a dream about being with Katie at a party. Annie continues messaging Katie, lamenting how the world is full of lies and pain, whereas Katie is honest and brave. One night, Annie receives a reply from Katie, the same message Elle received when Katie responded to her for the first time. Annie smiles, thinking that she has connected with a new friend. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.